work out of weather delays. My name is John Ross and I'm the marketing coordinator at AGC of America in Arlington, Virginia. Before we begin our presentation, I have a few brief announcements. If you have any questions for the presenter, on your screen on the GoToWebinar toolbar, you should see the questions box. Please use this area for submitting questions. Also, please feel free to submit questions as they occur to you. Uh, but do be aware that we will be holding off on answering questions until today's speaker has completed their presentation. Except for the speaker, attendees will be muted for the duration of the webinar. Also, everyone who is registered for today's webinar will receive an email within the next three to five business days with a link to access the audio recording and a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation. I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Mike Bennett. He is the VP of Sales and Product Strategy at Athenium Analytics. Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having us, John. We're, we're excited for this webinar. We're excited um, to talk about de-risking the weather and construction. Really excited to work with a partner like the Associate General Contractors of America. Um, so a little bit of background on myself. Um, as John mentioned, I'm the VP of Sales and Product Strategies here at Athenium Analytics. Um, my background is in meteorology. That's where my degree is from, uh, from Cornell University, and really in meteorology and communications. Uh, with my time at the company, work with uh, the product and tech teams, as well as closely with our clients uh, to collaborate on product and, and really understand the features and functions that help out our clients the best, that, that um, make the products as, as usable for them as possible. So a little bit of background on Athenium Analytics before we start talking about de-risking the weather. Um, Athenium Analytics, uh, some of you who, who may have been to the last couple of conferences, Alaska Risk and Surety Bonding Conferences in Florida, uh, may have seen a, a couple of different names initially, Weather Analytics and Athenium Analytics. So background on that is our company was founded back in 2012 as Weather Analytics, uh, building a historic database of granular gap-free global weather uh, going back up to, to 40 years. And uh, about May last year, we acquired and merged with another company called Athenium. And because of some of our, our tools moving beyond the weather, we decided it was right to, to change our name to Athenium Analytics. We still, though, uh, curate, aggregate, normalize, and rationalize a ton of weather data, which we're going to talk about a bit later on, on, on how that weather data becomes useful for the construction industry. Uh, our main partners are insurance, government, financial trading, and, and of course, construction. On the insurance side, that's probably where we have the most clients. We have about 60 carrier clients, including three of the top five PNC insurers in the United States. Uh, two of our largest investors are actually global insurance companies. Um, our, our largest investor is actually the employees. And then the, the third largest outside investor is uh, the CIA's venture fund, Incutel. So um, we were fortunate enough uh, to start working with them a number of years ago. They were our first initial investor. And through them, we've been able to uh, work with several different government agencies um, in, in building out projects and, and uh, specific projects that I, I really can't talk about or, or else uh, our, our team has told me that, that they would not only have to, to kill me, but everyone else that heard this webinar. So we'll stay away from that. Uh, we build industry-leading products for, for underwriting, claims, quality assurance, and risk management. And so a number of these products, the R&D, uh, has been built out, again, for those, those government projects. And then we look into the commercial sector and try to understand how are the ways in which we can benefit uh, the commercial sector for the R&D we've already done on the government side. So uh, you'll see some products listed there. I'm not going to go too deep into any one of those products, but... Um, Gage is an underwriting tool for natural hazard risk assessment. Dexter is a post-event tool for understanding what's occurred at a particular location. Uh, Beacon is, is building out forecast alerts and hurricane tracking. Iris is high-resolution machine learning. Atlas is our, our global weather database. And TeamThink is our carrier performance QA tool. It's pieces of all of those, uh, especially Gage, Dexter, and Beacon, and Atlas, that we've pulled together and put into gauge construction. And, and that's a product we feel is best geared for the construction industry and, and how we, we learn um, in construction, how to de-risk the weather um, and how to make you all more efficient and uh, um, take the cost and the time and the energy and understanding the weather out of it. Um, our background aside from being weather is that we have leveraged artificial intelligence through deep machine learning, computer vision, 
um, natural language processing, to be able to build out tools that are algorithmically driven, meaning it's less hands-on for us and, and really less hands-on for you and allows you to configure these tools to the way that you need them uh, to be able to understand your overall risk of weather. It empowers you to make the decisions, empowers you to manage your risk and ultimately mitigate it as well. So de-risking the weather in construction is a, a very in, important topic. Um, the construction industry as a whole loses billions of dollars every year, not just on, on delays and failures from the weather, uh, but buildings themselves are damaged during storms. You have heavy rainfall that causes uh, uh, mudding and, and really the lack of, of ability to perform any kind of work on the site for, for days or even weeks. Uh, freezing temperatures. I mean, concrete is such a, a temperature sensitive item that you need the exact temperature known ahead of time before you start pouring that concrete. But it, it's not just one site in this country that, that has seen weather uh, become a big risk or as a big risk. Every state, this is pretty crazy, every state in the country has been impacted by at least $1 billion disaster going back to 1980. So if you were to look at um, surveying 100 general contractors of, of what are your top risks, that you look for out there right now? What are you most concerned about? What's keeping you up at night? You may hear a lot of uh, lack of skilled labor. That's, that's probably number one. Uh, subcontractor work or, or lack of field supervision. Um, th there's a number of items that are potentially on that list. And weather may not always be the number one item, but I guarantee it's, it's gonna be on everyone's list. Weather is always gonna be a risk out there. And it's not necessarily just weather as the whole, it's pieces and elements of the weather that, that are a, a risk to, to safety, to operations, to performance on the site. Uh, for those in, in building construction on the phone, you start worrying about the outside hoist and the wind impacts that could shut that down. And for heavy civil and bridge, severe weather's always gonna be a potential issue. So the weather itself is, is an issue wherever you are in construction, not just spatially, not just across the country geographically, but at any time of the year. We're seeing more extreme weather disasters across the country. So there's 14 weather disasters in the last year uh, that exceeded $1 billion in losses in 2018. And that includes um, hurricanes, severe weather, tornado outbreaks, hail, drought, wildfire. And that, that number seems high, and, and it should seem high because it's been increasing year over year. There's, there's more population out there. Uh, there's more buildings that are being built, more, more heavy civil and infrastructure being built, uh, but you also are seeing a changing climate. So the average between 1980 and 2013 was $6.2 um, billion disasters a year. We'll round it to say six. In just the last five years, we've averaged above $12 billion disasters. So we've seen that number double in just the last five years and our team of, of meteorologists really expects that number to continue to increase as we head through the next five years and even beyond that. So overall, we, we see weather as a big risk in construction that's not necessarily being addressed by the tools that are out there right now, but we also see it as a risk that's gonna to continue to grow and continue to expand um, and continue to drain resources and time and money from general contractors. The climate itself, we, we know it's it's been changing in the last 50 to 100 years. It's going to continue to change, and that's why we expect those billion-dollar disasters to increase. Heavy precipitation events have increased 30% uh, in the last century. So that's times where you see torrential downpours that cause some quick flooding on site. That's increased already, and the speed at which it's increasing is increasing as well. Temperatures themselves have risen more than 2 degrees in the last 60 to 70 years. And the days that are above 90 degrees, the days where you start to run into issues with worker safety and the potential for OSHA violations, that's also increased as well. And most studies see it increasing exponentially now as we head through the next 30 years. In fact, um, one particular uh, peer reviewed study has 20 to 30 day increase of the number of 90, day, 90 degree days across the country by 2050 on average. Some areas may increase by as much as 40 to 50 days. So again, weather risk not going away. And if anything, 
uh, perhaps increasing. There was one particular study that was done in the UK um, that, that looked at the weather risk as a whole. Um, it looked at how the weather risk impacts construction sites. And the UK weather is, is not as variable, perhaps, as, as the weather across our country, uh, but uh, you could think of it as occasionally rainy, foggy, cool, damp weather. On average, just the weather alone as a factor extends project durations by uh, 21%. That same study looked at what if these sites took into account historical weather data and better understood what time of the year was better to work on certain construction sites, uh, what time of the year was better to work on certain critical phases. And if they were to do that, they could have decreased their project durations by 16%. So I'm not saying that those same stats, those same exact stats would apply in the US, but it's pretty analogous to some of the weather that we have here, especially seasonally driven weather, and how taking into account historical weather can um, seriously impact your project durations, um, improve performance, and, and save money at the end of the day. This is a look at how we take into account the annual uh, weather risk. And what we've done is, is break down using our historical weather data what your weekly risk is of doing, in this particular case, framing across the country. And you can see that there's certain times of the year, obviously, where you have a much higher risk of, of framing. And there's certain times of the year where that risk of, of framing starts to drop down. But it's driven by the time of the year, but it's also driven by the location. If you're a, a national GC, uh, that's doing projects uh, across the northern plains and the desert southwest and the east coast you want to know what your relative risk is across doing projects at all of those locations at different times of the year to be able to better allocate your resources and that's what looking at the historical weather is going to allow you to do so having said all of that looking at the historical weather better understanding um, what the the historical weather could mean for your site that's what we've tried to do with, with our product, and that's what we're bringing to the market here with Gauge Construction. So we've put together Gauge Construction, and, and the AGC has been generous enough in, in allowing us to work with uh, several of their um, uh, member companies, member companies um, um, down in Louisiana and upstate New York, uh, large companies, small companies, to understand what features and functions needed to be in the product for them to be able to use it. How does it become useful for them? How do they use it? Um, and we've been able to build out what we feel is a good product, um, a great product to be able to mitigate the risk of weather by doing so. Um, we've also been fortunate enough to have a great insurance uh, carrier collaborator in this in, in AXA XL. Um, and through them, we've worked with um, a number of larger construction companies as well, including Turner Construction. Um, and that's allowed us to, again, get that, that breadth of, of size and geographic distribution of some of these construction companies to make sure this isn't a product that just works for one geography or one size company, but also uh, that it works for everyone. So what exactly does Gauge Construction do? It does a number of things, and it's for a number of different use cases across the company. It delivers short-term, long-term, and post-event weather analytics to contractors. So uh, if you need to manage the long-term risk of doing a project, whether it's pre-bid or pre-con, or, or even during the construction process itself, we're providing phase risk analysis uh, to optimize every project's critical path and optimize understanding your weather risk during those critical paths. We're calculating potential lost weather days that are configurable to what your contract says is a lost or adverse weather day. You're able to understand down to a square kilometer or, or neighborhood level, essentially, what weather has actually occurred at your project site. And you're able to configure forecast alerts based on, on more accurate forecast data, but also more configurable forecast alerts that are important to the actual work you're doing on your site and are important to the people on your work site to ensure safety. We're also able to track tropical disturbances and risk based on a 10-day hurricane track intensity forecast. That's a little bit of what Gauge Construction does, and, and we'll get into a, a demo of it shortly, but I just wanted to give a little bit more of a background on the product itself. So who's using it? Who across the company would be in need of this product, Gauge Construction? For planning and scheduling, needing a better way to assess and mitigate the weather risk 
uh, not just in the long term, and again, not just pre-bid or pre-con, during construction, uh, looking at your long-term risk, looking at your short-term risk, looking at your near-term risk, your next seven days, and how do you optimize your scheduling based on that. As a site superintendent, needing a better and more accurate way to notify your workers on site of any kind of upcoming impactful weather that could impact uh, their scheduling, but also impact their worker safety. And then as a project manager, needing a good way to be able to document uh, the different type of weather that, that is occurring on your project site. It, it's essentially creating a virtual weather station to be able to notify owners, be able to notify your carrier, uh, your architect of actual lost weather days that have occurred so you could document them and make sure that they're written out. So let's get into a demo of the product itself. This would be the first site that you go to uh, if you're moving into gauge construction. You would log in, and on the site itself, you're able to look at a national view of all the construction sites you have going on right now, uploaded with all the information that is necessary uh, to be able to understand the risks. So the different phases that are ongoing right now, the perils and thresholds that are important to you in those phases, and the time frame that um, we're dealing with on those phases. So we'll hope to see some of you at the AGC uh, convention next week. So let's go into the Colorado Convention Center and better understand uh, the risk at this, at this uh, location. Well, the first thing we do is look at this map. And there's the potential for severe weather out there today. So you have a severe weather risk later this evening. And you also have wind gusts forecasted to reach or exceed 20 miles per hour. Those are the thresholds that we have set in here that are important to us in this phase it's 20 mile an hour winds. I could scroll down and look at a daily weather forecast that pops up the daily temperature. Uh, it has the heat index value, which this time of the year obviously is not a, a huge impact. Uh, your winds, your wind gusts, and whether or not there's any precipitation forecast, as well as when you're at risk for severe weather. On the top line here is my short-term forecast, as well as the last few days. And over here on the top left is my calendar view of what's actually occurred at this site. So again, from a documenting standpoint, if I'm a project manager, understanding the type of weather that has occurred and being able to document it is hugely important. Um, we've, in working with some of these um, um, AGC members and, and through AXA-XL, have, have learned that the documentation process alone is, is sometimes skipped, um, sometimes left out or, or kind of last to do. And it, it, this makes it easy to, in case you forgot to do it, go back and take a look and understand at a granular basis what has actually occurred at your project site, even if you're not on the project site itself to document it. So going back to March 13th, we see there were four and a half inches of snow. And uh, you see that right at 71 mile an hour wind gust. This, this was actually that, um, for anyone that, that follows national news, and for me as a meteorologist, this was kind of an exciting time. This was that bomb cyclone out in the middle portion of the country. Um, we saw uh, across portions of the uh, the Rockies and, and the front plains there, um, 80, 90 mile an hour wind gust. So 71 miles per hour uh, occurred at this particular location. And, and here's why this information is important as a, a virtual weather station. So our post event tool, um, gets down extremely granular. As I mentioned, uh, you're, you're basically at the, the neighborhood level, the project level, in terms of what's actually occurred. Up until now, there's there's been two ways to essentially document what's occurred at a site. There's going online, whether it's NOAA data or, or some other website, to look up um, what's occurred at that, that particular address or at those um, geo coordinates. Um, or there's actually putting on a, a weather station on top of your building and maintaining and calibrating it and constantly moving it as your construction builds. There's issues with, with both of those, obviously. Uh, for the latter, it, it becomes costly and cumbersome to continuously uh, add and, and maintain weather stations on your site. And then for the former, for looking up detailed weather information, uh, when you type in an address, again, whether it's through um, uh, NOAA or, or through some other source, what it's doing is pulling in the nearest weather station information, which is fine if you're doing 
weather information uh, or looking for weather information because your project is in New York City or it's in a major metropolitan or near an airport. But oftentimes, construction projects are not that close to a recording station. Um, there's about 1,500 weather recording stations across the country. So when we had our data science team uh, look into it, it's about a median distance of 20 to 25 miles between those weather stations. So in many cases, you could be looking at a, uh, a recording station that's 10, 15, 20 miles away from where your actual project site is. In the summertime, if you have a thunderstorm go through and you picked up an inch and a half of rain at your site and you may have had wind gusts 50 miles an hour from that thunderstorm, the nearest recording site may not even have had a thunderstorm. It could have been a sunny day the entire day. Likewise, in the winter, uh, the variability of snowfall is extreme in some locations across a short span. Um, even in the summertime, winds can be uh, very fickle as, as far as how they vary based on uh, distance. So to be able to have that virtual weather station on your site tell you what the weather was and to be able to document it down to the hour and then be able to print this out as a document uh, to be able to uh, put it in your files or send to the owner or send to the insurance carrier and let them know what the weather was at that site um, is, is hugely valuable. The next part of what we're going to look at is the phasing risk summary. So this is taking into account up to 40 years of, of historical weather data across the country. Um, we have aggregated and again, normalized, rationalized, made gap free, smoothed out uh, 55 trillion data points of weather. We're adding 4 billion new data points of weather every day. So weather is where we cut our, our teeth. That's, that's really where we started as a company, it's not going away. We continue to build up our weather database, and it's for reasons like this, for, for understanding the weather risk at any one location. So we're looking at the risk in the framing stage of construction at this Colorado Convention Center. And the way this is built out is we had our um, uh, structural engineer on staff work with our meteorology team and better understanding what are the thresholds that are important for framing or what are the perils that are important for framing, and what are the thresholds that are critical where if you cross those thresholds, you can no longer do any framing. Machinery can't work, or humans can't operate the machinery. You can't pour concrete if it's foundation stays. Um, you can't do any kind of outdoor on-site work. What you're seeing here is a chart that goes through the weekly risk elements at this particular site based on those perils and thresholds. And where you see green, this is a, generally a lower risk. And where you see the yellows, the oranges, and reds, this is generally a higher risk. So from a planning and scheduling standpoint, you can see that based on where we have this built out, where we have this set up, our first few weeks are going to be our, our riskiest weeks. Then we go through a pretty good span of, of four and a half months or so of decent weather, uh, of pretty low risk weather. And then as it stands right now, our final five weeks, we start to enter into a riskier stage again. So how would I use this information from planning and scheduling? You could certainly look to um, change your schedule if you can. Oftentimes it's not necessarily the case, but it's really better understanding what your risk is to see how you could perhaps reallocate your resources uh, to speed up or, or change your, your schedule. In this case, again, with my last five weeks, being at higher risk time, are there ways in which I could devote more resources to this project, devote more time, more overtime, to make sure that I'm trying to wrap up this project by that second week of October, before that risk starts to climb significantly, can I make sure I'm done with it? And in the end, is the savings that I get from um, wrapping up this project early and losing the risk of, of adverse weather days and, and a longer project duration worth the money that I would pour into uh, paying some additional overtime? On our end, we think yes. There's also the historical alerts then and forecast alerts element. So again, this is what, what you, the user, have set up at this particular location that's impactful weather uh, to you during this particular project phase. And we'll get into how you can potentially edit those 
And then finally, as we go into the lost weather days, this is where we're, again, taking into account that historical lost weather data. And we're able to identify ways in which um, we could use that, that historical data based on your thresholds or your contract thresholds to figure out what are the number of days that you can expect to lose based on those adverse or lost weather conditions on a monthly basis. Oftentimes in, in federal contracts, perhaps it's a, a tenth of inch of rain counts as a, a lost weather day. So aside from being able to document in this project, you could actually predict based on, on historical data, what is that number of lost weather days that you can expect in any given month throughout the year? One other aspect I want to get into in the product before I get into the configurability of it is our, our hurricane forecast. Um, I mentioned early on that, that we are uh, an initial investor in the uh, in Athenium Analytics, and, and still one of our largest outside investors, is the CIA's venture fund in QTEL. Um, one of the projects that they that we worked on with a, a particular government agency, and, and I could talk about this project, I just can't talk about the government agency, um, was to see if we can build out a hurricane forecast system that goes beyond the National Hurricane Center's five-day forecast, because they needed a better way uh, to protect uh, critical national infrastructure to be able to move critical resources around, and they needed more than five days to be able to do so. So we'll go into an example. Here's um, Hurricane Irma. What you're seeing here is in the black is gonna be the actual track that Hurricane Irma took. That's the, the track that, that the hurricane took um, as it went through back in September, 2017. And in the colored is where our forecast was six days from landfall. So what I'm gonna do here is zoom in on a couple of these locations. So you could see our track six days out from landfall. If you were following the National Hurricane Center, would have stopped you right around here, uh, around the, the central eastern portion of Cuba. That's where the track would have stopped. Using our forecast, um, insurance carriers at the time uh, were better able to allocate resources to Florida uh, to understand, by understanding really, what, what our product was showing them, that within 50 miles we were predicting the landfall six days out. We offer swath forecasts and wind probabilities as well, so that as a, a general contractor um, working on a construction site in an area that could potentially be impacted by a tropical storm or a hurricane, uh, you want to be able to not just allocate your, your human resources, but move around different um, phasing and, and different construction projects on the site to make sure that you limit your, your liability when any kind of storm potentially goes through. Um, we found that that there are insurance carriers, many of them that that will even in their contracts have a clause that pays for a contractor to take down a crane or to remove on-site uh, uh, material that could potentially be impacted by tropical storms and hurricanes. Because to them and to the general contractor, it's cheaper to do that than have the potential for a crane collapse or have the potential for a material loss because of that tropical storm. So again, this is just another way where this product is, is helping out, is, is able to help out a general contractor. So we mentioned that this is all set up in here right now, right? These are the construction sites that, that we have set up, and, and that's how you would go about using the product. But, but how do you actually go in there, and how are you actually able to set these up? How are you able to set up your, your thresholds and set up your phases? Well, the first thing you would do would be to go ahead and add a new site. And let's say we want to build out the, a site here, and we're going to call it the AGC site. And I hope it wasn't a secret where you guys are. <laughs> we're at uh, 2300 Wilson Boulevard in Arlington. We're going to build out that site. And let's just say, by the way, that 
when we went onto this site, it wasn't actually in the right spot. Maybe uh, it's a new construction site. You don't have an address. You just have a, a city and you have a street corner six miles down the dirt road on the right-hand side. We're able to move that area, that location that we're looking at. Let's say it actually was right here. We'll move the dot there. And again, why is that important? When you're getting down to project level for post-event alerting, so you need to be exact on, on where your location is, because if it's a summertime thunderstorm or um, some kind of wind gust or snowfall or freezing rain, you want to know exactly what's falling at your site so you can document um, and, and be able to submit that in the future. We're going to go ahead and add this site. As it does so, now we start to build out the different phases of construction. So we can add a new phase in here, and we're going to add in the framing phase. And let's just say our framing phase started today and went, it's a long framing phase, so let's bring it through December 31st. We're looking pretty decent as far as the weather risk goes of, of crossing any of the, the perils and thresholds, those critical thresholds that, that we've set up until we start to get to the end of the phase. And so maybe this is where we want to start to look at how we can pour more resources into this to finish up, to schedule differently, to reallocate those resources. We're going to set up historical alerts now. Uh, maybe on this site, I know that I have to do a stormwater assessment because of my permit every half an inch of rain that's fallen. So I'm going to set up um, half an inch of rain notifications for post-event alerts. And for snowfall, it's important because uh, in my, my contract, it says for two inches of snow, I can count that as a lost weather day. I'm going to put in two inches of snow. For cold weather, anytime the temperature drops below 30, for material purposes, for concrete pours, I need to know that. And if the wind's gusted above 35 miles per hour, I need to know that. On the forecast side, it's all those same elements and what's important to you. But then we've also added in heat index. So uh, for OSHA purposes, OSHA violations, um, in some areas, maybe it's a heat index above 105, and others, maybe it's a heat index above 110. But understanding what those thresholds are uh, as a site superintendent or a project manager or a risk manager, to be able to set them up at this particular location and in this particular phase of construction. So I'm going to go ahead and save these changes. Next, I'm going to go into lost weather days. How do I create lost weather days? Well, let's just keep it simple and say in our contract, anytime that uh, we get rain above a tenth of an inch, that counts as a lost weather day. Everything else we can submit later on, but for us, that's a lost weather day, and that's all we want to calculate. We'll go ahead and calculate that and save our changes. And then finally, alert recipients. Who's actually on the site right now? Who's working on the site? I'm working on this site, the only one right now, so I'll go ahead and throw in my email address at this site. These are the recipients that are going to be receiving email alerts at your project site whenever any of those critical thresholds have been passed on the forecast side. So they get alerts, they get notifications that there's impactful weather that's upcoming at this project site. Once you go ahead and create your sites, it sets you up back up in your, your calendar view. You have your, your forecast generated. Your forecast alerts and historical alerts take about six hours to generate. Your lost weather days, those are created instantly. We're able to go back and look historically at what those lost weather days would be. Here's our phase risk summary. You could add multiple phases of the same phase. You could add multiple phases that overlap each other. You could create a, a custom template phase. So there's different ways to customize and configure your site. And then once you do have it set up, let's say you need to change something. Um, you need to edit the, the time that you're, you're working in a particular phase. You could go ahead and make all different kinds of edits and changes within the site, and you could set up custom um, uh, permissions within the product to be able to do so. So I want to change this because I want to wrap this up earlier. So what if I wrap this up by October 1st? That does a lot as far as risk goes in altering our risk with this project phase. Um, our forecast alerts, just as uh, to, to leave you on this, our, our forecast alerts, aside from having the, the alerting capability that's customized to the thresholds and, 
and set to the, the perils and thresholds that are important to you and important to your phase of construction. Um, our forecasts have uh, uh, been verified. Um, they're, they're used by carriers. We, we've done verification studies on them where the most recent one found that we are 22% better uh, for a seven-day forecast when it comes to wind than the, the American model. Um, so we stand by our forecast, but, but we also stand by the fact that our, our product is, is used across several different aspects of a general contractor, of a construction company, um, and can be used by, by multiple departments in the same company. Um, we're looking forward to, to obviously bringing this product uh, to you all in, in the near future. Um, again, we'll, we'll be at the We'll be at the conference coming up next week. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by our booth. We'll, we'll be boosting there um, Monday through Wednesday. And just as kind of a, a, a last tidbit on this, um, if you want more information, you can go to athenium.com forward slash construction. The discount for AGC members is 30%. So it's uh, because we've we've developed this with, with the Associate General Contractors of America. We, we, we want to be able to um, bring you guys, and, and really this, this drives from, from the AGC, uh, bring you guys these products at, at a, a cost-effective mark that makes it uh, a no-brainer to be able to use them, and, and we feel like we've, we've achieved that. But if you want to learn more information, you can go to that website, stop by us, um, shoot me an email, Um Just generally say hi. We'll, we'll, we'll be out there next week. Fantastic. Uh, at this time, Mike will answer some questions. We do have a few in the chat log here. Uh, starting us off is the question, what role do the development partners play as you build the software? So they've played a, a significant role. Um, a lot of what you see here, I, I would say essentially the whole product looks very, very different than our what we call internally version one. Um, we started off with Let's take a, a piece of this product built for insurance and this product and this product, and let's merge it together and see if um, the same products that insurance carriers used could be useful for the construction side. And the consensus from our development collaborators was, it's helpful, but this is really confusing. And we realized it's because we were building this for carriers and just trying to squeeze a square peg into a round hole. And so our collaborators, helped us make the, the information more streamlined, more usable, uh, but also helped us develop new ideas. So um, one of the new ideas that, that will, be, will be in the product in um, later next month will be winded elevation. Um, and that was actually one of the uh, uh, development partners with XXL, that was Turner Construction, that said, look, you know, when we have a, a crane up, um, it's important to know the wind at, at the surface, but but it's also important to understand what is the wind at, at 150 feet up. And so uh, we have our structural engineer um, built out an algorithm using um, uh, property elevation, land use characteristics, average uh, wind speeds in different directions, um, and, and building heights to be able to gauge not just on the forecast side, but on the post event side, what the, the winded elevation is. And so it's these all these different features and functions that go into this product, uh, I would say the vast majority of them have come from our, our collaboration partners. Fantastic. Uh, actually, kind of touching on that same point, uh, question two is, what new features do you have in the pipeline for 2019? It's a, a great question. Uh, so again, that, that winded elevation will be coming out um, shortly. We're super excited about that. Um, some of the, the bigger, more ambitious projects we have planned for 2019 is uh, a mobile application. Uh, so that's on the roadmap. We have lightning alerts on the roadmap as well. Um, we're looking to break down some of the risk scoring into more regional elements. Uh, so for some of the, the smaller contractors that uh, perhaps operate in, in a smaller geography, being able to understand what the relative risk is across their geography of that particular peril and those thresholds. Um, uh, we're looking to create additional forecast alerts, um, adding to lost weather days, drying days, which is another one that we've gotten through collaboration partners. So there, there's, there's a number of items on our, our development pipeline. And, and one of the things that, that makes us um, 
uh, a great company to, to build this out. And, and I don't mean to make this at all a, a commercial about Athenium Analytics, but it's, I'm, I'm really proud of the work that we've done and, and the work that we continue to do is, is we're a team of technologists and, and scientists and meteorologists and structural engineers and, and hydrologists, data science teams and, and natural language processing experts and computer vision experts and all these ologists, right? And these guys work, work tirelessly um, to, to build these out. And so we have product deployments um, every two weeks. We work in a very agile work environment um, with agile development. And that's allow us, uh, allowed us to, to build this out as quickly as we have. And it allows us to pivot. Um, it allows us to add new features quicker as well. Fantastic. Uh, next question is, uh, what is your data source for current weather uh, data and forecasting, and how precise are they? Who certifies the data is correct? Sure, that's a it's a great question. Um, so mentioned our our team, we have um, a number of meteorologists on staff. Uh, our our technical meteorologist team, the ones that are are building out the algorithms in this, is uh, nine people deep, and these are all grad level and PhD level. Many of them come from the the academic sphere of of meteorology. And so they built out patented and patent pending um, algorithms to take in multiple sources of, of weather information and spit it out into actionable information. So on the post event side, it's being able to take in radar data, being able to take in satellite data, model data, human observations, and how do you transform that and algorithmatize it to be able to spit out an actual amount at each location down to that one square kilometer. Um, that's what they do. On the, the forecast side, again, taking in different forecast models, a uh, number of different models. On the hurricane one alone, we have 93 different models and ensemble members, and it applies machine learning techniques to, to really get better and learn over time. Um, on the verification, we perform, obviously, in, internal verification studies. That's where you had the, the forecast stat there of 22% more accuracy in the seven-day forecast. Um, on the post-event side, aside from internal, um, these are products that insurance carriers are using today that um, they're using to understand whether or not a, a, uh, a claim is valid, whether or not a, a weather occurrence has occurred and where it has occurred, when it occurred, and how bad was it when it occurred. Um, so that's our, that's our internal verification. I mean, that, that's the way that we verified is that um, uh, that these carriers are, are using it today and have been using it. Fantastic. Uh, next question is, how many sites can you have at once? Are you limited by states or regions? That's a, another great question. So the way that the, uh, the pricing is broken out is actually by project site. So when we were thinking about how to go about um, uh, pricing this, and, and we, we got information from our collaborators and again from the, the AGC on this, is initially it was by the users. Um, because that's how we do it on the insurance carrier side. And we found that it was actually more useful here to do it by project sites. So there's different tiered levels of, of pricing that are based on uh, the number of project sites, whether it's one site, five sites, 10 sites, 30 sites, more than that. And each one of those comes with an unlimited number of users. So if you wanted 30 project sites, theoretically, you could have 5,000 users on those 30 project sites. Um, I don't know if anyone had 5,000 users on it, but <laughs> it's, it's available for you at that point. So that's, that's how we, we go about breaking it out. Awesome. Uh, next one we have here is, is there any APIs for integrating into a contractor's own ERP enterprise system? It's, that's another great question. So um, our products that we, we generally build out all is API connectivity. Um, so again, on the, the insurance side, we've built out um, API connections to every product that we release, um, usually in uh, uh, JSON or GeoJSON format, uh, sometimes in CSV. And so we fully plan on being able to um, produce out API with this. Um, that's, that was another kind of item on our roadmap uh, for the next few months is different APIs to be able to integrate this into uh, someone's own uh, current solutions. Awesome. A uh, few more questions here. Uh, what other data do you rely on or use besides recorded data at weather stations to, to, pardon me, to create a 
virtual weather station at a specific site? Sorry, can you ask that one more time? I would be happy to. <laughs> uh, what other data do you rely on or use besides recorded data at weather stations to create a virtual weather station on a specific site? Gotcha. So I think this goes back to what are our weather sources for, for post-event weather. Um, and so it's, it's, it's the actual weather through, through radar. Um, it's the weather through satellite data, um, through model data, um, through human observations. And, and combining those all algorithmically to, to create these virtual weather stations. So we feel that there's, there's more value in being able to create that virtual weather station um, and, and using this immediately rather than relying on uh, a weather station that's 15, 20 miles away or relying on uh, costly to maintain weather stations that you put up yourself at a site. Uh, this actually does sort of build on that same premise. Uh, how would you use this for a project such as a pipeline where the job site is 100 miles long? Sure, that's that's a, a great question and a great point, um, and and one of in which we've we've started to tackle, and we'd we'd like to obviously work more with with partners in being able to tackle that. Um, the way that we look at it is is you may have several different locations that you're working on on that site. So maybe at, at no point are you working on a 100-mile long segment of it, but you're working on different segments. So uh, could you point out those areas of work as segments that you're working on and build them out as, as project sites, uh, individual project sites? Um, that's, that's one way we've looked at it. Um, understanding, you know, if it's a five- or seven-year project, you're going to be looking at that long-term risk a little bit differently. So... Um, we, we've also looked at ways to kind of create linear elements within the, the product um, to, to better understand if that's useful and, and how we would go about verifying data with that. So we're looking at it. We continue to look at it, um, but, but it's, a, it's a great use case, and we'd love to hear ideas if, if, if that person has. Absolutely. Um, the next one is a little bit more into the specifics here. Uh, with weather stations 20 miles apart, how is rain depth measured to the 0.1 inch after an event at a specific site? Yep, uh, 0.01 inches. So, um, yeah, so if you look at, and let me, let me take a step back. Um, the way that most people verify rain data now, again, is either you have a, a weather station at your site, or you're using the nearest weather station. So the, the nearest weather station is typically 15, 20 miles away. And oftentimes someone will go to that and say there's a rainstorm and uh, you know they want to say that they picked up a quarter of an inch of rain and let's see what the rain was at that weather station. Maybe it was more than a quarter of an inch. So, so maybe you, you win there, but there's a level of inaccuracy in doing that. And there's a certain level of um, mistakes that can be made by doing that. So what we're doing instead is utilizing sources that get down to that um, square third mile, essentially. So a, a square kilometer that take into account all of these other sources at that resolution. That's how we're getting down to the resolution of a virtual weather station every square kilometer. Perfect. Um, this is a nice one. You seem to do extremely well on hurricane tracking. Are you able to do anything similar for tornado tracking or forecasting? Hmm. That's a that's a great question. Um, so on the tornado tracking part, um, on post-event tornadoes, we, we do an excellent job um, in our, our post-event tool that we provide to carriers. Um, we're, we're able to track tornadoes using, again, radar data and model data, um, as well as human observations with that. Um, on the forecast side, what we do is give a uh, um, a risk of tornadic storms rather than a overall you're going to see an EF5 tornado tomorrow, right? Um, the problem with tornado forecasting, and this is just to go back to my, my meteorology background, is the scale of a tornado is extremely, extremely small compared to other weather phenomena. Um, even the, the smallest thunderstorm is, is bigger than the largest tornado. So you're going to run into issues anytime you're trying to forecast whether or not someone's going to see a tornado. Um, hail swaths, on the other hand, are a little bit larger. They're um, a little bit easier to forecast the conditions for hail at a particular location. 
Um, and it's more likely if you're forecasted for the potential for hail that you could see hail. Um, I, if, if anyone has, is familiar with the Storm Prediction Center and you live in the south of the plains, you know, you may be at risk of a tornado, let's say it's 15 times a year. You could go through an entire lifetime living in that location 15 times a year at risk for tornado and never actually see a tornado over your property. So just because it's such a small scale phenomena, it's, it's tough to be able to pinpoint where that's going to be projected to be. That makes a lot of sense. Um, the last question we have here, uh, do you have an academic or educational pricing available? I uh, would love to expose my scheduling students to this software. I would say reach reach out separately. Um, it's it's not something we've we've necessarily thought about, but um, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that that specific use case. And and again, my my email address. I think if it's not on there, it's um, Mike dot Bennett at two N's two T's at Athenium dot com. Fantastic. Uh, at this point, we don't have any other questions. If you do have a question, now is uh, is the time. So I'll uh, we'll wait just a couple of minutes to see if any more trickle in, and uh, if not, then we'll close out the webinar. Uh, but in the meantime, Mike, thank you so much for joining us today. We've really uh, appreciated your presentation. No, this has been a lot of fun, and, and again, we are we're super excited on our end. Uh, I, I only get to be one voice of, of the many voices that have built this product and worked to build this product and bring it to you all. So we're super excited to bring it to you. We're super excited to, to hear the feedback that, that people have on, on its applicability and its utilization. Um, and, and excited to hear any you know more features and functions that, that you want to see in the product. And that sounds fantastic. We really look forward to seeing what, uh, what's coming down the pipe. Uh, we don't have any more questions, so at this time, I'd just like to thank everybody for logging on today. Uh, again, just a reminder, you will be receiving a recording as well as the slides from today's presentation within the next three to five business days. Uh, with that, have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.